Um, this is the perfect time for us to, uh, uh, to have a weekend with you guys. Should have been the photography show, should have been the SWPP convention, so many different things happening. I'm here today with the lovely Kate Kirkman, who some of you will know as Kate Hopwell-Smith, uh, amazing wedding photographer, amazing portrait photographer, uh, commercial food all sorts it's like a bit of everything really Kate isn't it welcome and thank you for joining us live here as part of our weekend of live events for the photography show nice to be out <laughs> but it is isn't it it's, it's so nice even though we've got our two meters ish kind of distancing and it's just so nice to see people in real life isn't it yeah I, I can't wait till we're actually able physically to just hook up with all customers but thank you for joining us and uh, and your great husband brent standing in the background here not wanting to be on camera this time around so uh, um but we're here to talk about your business a little bit tell us a little bit about you know your world and where you've come from and and, and what uh, and what your business is now so i started like a lot of uh, female lifestyle photographers as a wedding and, and portrait person and that was my focus and I loved it, and about 10 years ago, I began to notice that there was something happening in, in, a, in the States called Boudoir, and it really wasn't here at all. And I actually got asked to do um, a shoot for a husband's 50th. And um, she called me and she said he, he's a very wealthy man, he has everything he wants, so I'm just going to give myself to him for my birthday. And I was like, okay, great. Result. And uh, it was nice to shoot. We got there and she kind of got all everything out and um, it was all kind of clothing. And I said, no, that's great. She said, he loves my legs, fab. I said, where's the lingerie? And she was like, what? Because we hadn't really called it a boudoir shoot. And so she kind of opened this big drawer up and there was an amazing lingerie. And it really went from there. That one shoot, I think, stirred something in me. Um, it probably took me about, 18 months to realize how I wanted to shoot boudoir it was really misunderstood but I think in in the UK now it's established yeah it's it's had a it's had a yeah. rough name hasn't it you know it's yeah. kind of you you the word itself is almost you want to reinvent the word yeah. don't you and but I think it's happening through certainly through people like yourself and others uh, that we work with and you know across the board that that whole change in perspective because it's not actually about the photography is it really you no, know. and in fact, people who react negatively to it just don't understand women. Yeah. It, 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 because sadly, it's about women and it's about the fact that, well, 80% of UK women don't feel good about themselves. And, you know, I'm one of them. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a common problem. It's sad. Yeah. And actually, all women deserve to feel beautiful. And that's what I do. And it's just a, a mechanic to make people feel better yeah. and often you know I'm really strict I don't show women anything any pictures that I shoot at all because it's it just let them have the experience and, and they go away on fire yeah. they look you know yeah. they walk differently they speak differently and uh, I get a lot of emails from husbands and partners saying thank you wow yeah and, I, and I've, I've noticed this you know through through the kind of last few years that we've been much more involved in portrait photography that you know what we realized too is that it's actually most of our work that we do your work all of our clients work our products are actually bought by women ah. and yeah. and it and it from the wedding photography from the portrait having their children done their pets it's it's a very small percentage of the man that's actually buying you know, whatever the whatever the relationship well you know in today's world everybody has a contribution to make and i think that's why it's important if if there's another decision maker in the process that they're included whether it's a husband a friend a you know child or whatever there's a decision maker but specifically in boudoir you know i've, I've the time i've spent around uh, photographers to understand actually it's about how it makes them feel the experience of it yeah, and, and it's about addressing the fact that women, sadly, don't often feel great about themselves. And, you know, a, a fascinating thing for me is that we do ourselves and our partners a disservice by feeling bad about ourselves because, you know, often the, the people that love you, they think you're beautiful. Yeah. And they can't understand, and men struggle to understand this, but actually, so by doing whether it's food or, or something similar, you can actually transform your own relationships 
your sex life. I mean, honestly, I've seen it all. And I've done, you know, people who've had cancer, coming back from cancer. Um, and it's, it's, it is truly transformative. And this is why when people kind of are negative about boudoir, I just think it's so sad that yeah. actually people don't understand the, what it's about. It's a label. And you're right, it'd be lovely to have a new one, but I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> you know, the reality is now at least women in the UK understand what it means. Yeah. And I, um, it can mean anything from glamour to... Well, it was interesting when I was looking at her, the numbers of our active customers that are actively buying products from us. We're now at nearly just under 60% of our customers are actually women buying our products now. So the, the growth of female photographers yeah. in our industry, thankfully, has gotten more and more positive and it's growing and the influences that you'll have, not the least of which is on our products too. So the mm -hmm. things that we've been doing that have given us the opportunity to help you more. So talking about products, mm. I know that, uh, it, that you know, your business has evolved through weddings with wedding albums, yeah. and, 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 but you finding boudoir is actually one that's actually creating print too. You're, you're actually, you know, print is one of the things that's actually by, you know, happening through boudoir for you too. For me, it's the thing I print the most. And, and interestingly, I think with weddings, you almost have to encourage people to, to print and quickly, yeah. you know, because life happens and people have kids and we all know the reasons why people don't do their wedding albums and it's certainly not a lack of love for the imagery but i think a lot of people are surprised that boudoir leads to print because the way women feel about these pictures is is, is incredible and it's very precious and you there is no sale yeah. you know you don't have it, it this is it's not what it's about the women want the pictures even if they're going to keep it really really private um but actually, they keep it less private than you would imagine. I think what happens is, you know, and I do wall art, a lot of it, but the kind of wall art that people buy varies from what can be seen in you know, the house yeah. as opposed to the, yeah. maybe what's is in that, the bedroom and the what, bathroom. What, I mean, your photography is amazing because you cover from the, you know, the, the, the beautiful, stylized, uh, looking amazing, you know, discreet photographs mm. and then there's the things that people don't see that you cover that kind of whole that whole area the body sculpting side mm. and, and all that side of things but you're right it's hard for people to put boudoir pictures anywhere other than yeah. their bedroom isn't it you know so um and we're going to talk about that in a little bit more because we're really excited about one of the thing, pieces that we produced for you so that's going to happen too soon um one of the one of the one of the, one of the things that um that uh, i found in talking to you about your work and then when I look at the work that you've done and I and I look at the different works out there you can see a distinct difference often in the photography that's come from a woman than it has done from a man and I think we we can learn so much from you guys about thinking a little bit more about what it is that uh, the, the, that the end result is going to be so tell me about what is it that people see in the prints you know what, when you and I know you do actual physical prints in mounts and that mm -hmm. it could be in, in, in a folio box or, or whatever um, tell me a little bit more about that do you find well do you, do you actually give the prints to your clients do you see them and, and actually hand them over when they see them or do they get sent to them and what uh, what's the reaction to the prints I think t I've never been what I'd call a local photographer so in terms of our weddings they're often clients abroad or all over England and with boudoir people fly in from Europe wow. and I went up to Scotland recently to do a shoot and so I don't have that thing of half an hour away someone can can come and see me um, and so no I don't get to, don't get to no see I don't it. and I and actually when they see the images for the first time I think it's deeply private and even if it's for a present, so if there are a lot of people doing it for weddings right. or 40th. So bridal or, boudoir, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. It's a gift. A lot of women, sadly, feel they need to have a reason to book. You know, that they're, that they're not a good enough reason how they feel about themselves. But I, I understand that. So it's a gift. But I still say, I know you're gifting this, but this is a big thing you're about to see. You're going to see yourself in a totally different way. It's going to be emotional have a glass of wine and be on your own and I think other people would say absolutely that's not the way to do it I think it is I think it's a deeply personal private experience and and I hear back from women within once they get that gallery link it it's within 15 minutes really yeah wow. I get expletives I get emotion <laughs> um I, I no other 
thing that I shoot gets the same fast, emotive response. And it's, it's hugely rewarding. Yeah. And just going back to the point you made about gaze, I think it is really interesting, the male and female gaze. And what I say is that um, it's the woman is in control of her image. So I say, you, you know you're being watched, you're okay with being watched, and you're controlling the gaze. You're not being objectified by a man. Right. And there are men that can shoot boudoir well, yeah. but they shoot it like women. So we've got to get inside your heads then. Well, I think you've got to allow the woman to yeah. own her own image and how yeah. she wants to be seen, because the other reality is, if it's a gift, I do say to them, don't... I'd say that an album. I say, do not, my advice would be, do not finish the album and hand it over complete. Because men and women will choose about 50% the same images and 50% different images. Interesting. Yeah. And so I say, if you do the whole album, you're giving him your favourites and your version of you. But the reality is, if he then sees the rest of the images, he will honestly say, well, why haven't you well, included that one? Included and it's not just the, the not maybe just the, 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 the sexier body sexier stuff, it's the, yeah. stuff. it's the portraits. And a lot of people yeah. say to me, why, why, why do you think portraits think are, so, portraits important? are so, important? so important? Women need to, women see, need to see that they're beautiful, that they're beautiful in, every in every way. way. And, and I think it's all, think all in the eyes. And I, I think it's interesting too, I've had a number of people discussing and talking about that some of them talk to the partner before the shoot. Do you do that as well sometimes? It, 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 I always say to the woman, be honest with me as to why we're doing or why you're doing this, because I need to understand. And sometimes I would say 20% of my inquiries are for men, from men for their partners. Right. And right. they're saying and they're to me saying in an email, email. Very, very honestly, honestly I, want I want my wife, my wife to see, see how beautiful she is. I, it, I, I can't get through to her. Please show her. That's, that's, that's really, really interesting because it's, it's uh, hearing and seeing and reading some of the different things involved in the, some of the training that's gone on about understanding how your partner, be it a male or a female, sees you compared to how you see yourself. And I think often we forget that, you know, particularly when it's a couple of, of whatever gender, that partner will be thinking in a very different way. And what you hate about yourself or I hate about myself could be the thing that they love the most. And, and you don't know that, do you? Brent had to teach me. He said, he's a very interesting phrase, he says, it's my lens. When I look at you, it's my lens. Don't put your lens onto my camera. Right. You know, because he says, um, you both shoot, you? Yeah. Both, you're both in the business totally. together, you both shoot, it's from a wedding's point of view and I was, I was very uh, lucky enough to be at a wedding where you were both shooting, which yeah. was brilliant to see, um, so you both shoot, yeah. um, Brent's obviously an expert in video as well, yeah. which is good, and Sony ambassadors, is yeah, that right? Yeah, we both are, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which we love, absolutely love, and, uh, but he had to, he was the one that said to me, or com showed me really, that the, the people that love these women think they are absolutely gorgeous and he also said a very interesting thing which is men look to the positive in their partners like they love this woman or this man you know whatever you you don't focus on the bad stuff women focus on the bad stuff of themselves it's deeply negative but we're not going to change women so it's about understanding you know you need to understand and the first thing I say at the beginning of a shoot is so I ask if, if you know, are they in a relationship? Okay, great. What's their name? So let's say it's John. And I say to them, what does John most love about your body? And she'll say, ooh, um, okay, so he I loves my asked, boobs. Oh well, no, well, no, they'll always know. He loves my boobs, but it could be my back. It could be my neck. And, and, and they think, and they come up with something. If I say, so... Joe, what do you look most love about your body? She'll say, well, I hate my upper arms. I hate my profile. Um, I've got really fat thighs. And I'm like, I asked you what, what you, you like. Yeah, yeah. And that's the psychology of women. Yeah. So again, I, I have to be really careful how I communicate. Otherwise, I'm immediately dragging up the negatives. Which is, and that's part of the, the service that you're giving, yeah. isn't it? And we talk about this quite a lot, that, you know, it's not just about pressing the button. 
it's a it's like i'm a an untrained psychologist yeah. but the reality is you know i'm very much heterosexual happen to be i think women are absolutely bloody gorgeous i think they are stunning and so when i'm talking to my clients um what I'm saying to them is totally genuine. I, I think all my clients are absolutely beautiful and I do get all shapes and sizes. People think, you know, they say, oh, your galleries, they all look like models. And I'm like, they're real women who don't look like that when they come in. It's their best version. Yeah. And, and, and we all need to be reminded of our best version because we don't see it very often. You know, that's the reality. And it does take an effort. Yeah. You know, um, but to just celebrate that is... It, I think it's a deeply positive thing and it's I, I, there are two types of women I photograph without question the smaller minority are the ones who are in a very good place with themselves physically at that juncture in their life so they're getting married um, they're about to have a baby they look great they know they look great because they've worked hard <laughs> to look great and I'm they, gonna, gonna capture this yeah, right because now. maybe yeah, yeah. they're never going to look better yeah. but that's the minority the majority of women who know they're not they're looking their best but just need a confidence boost yeah. and and I, they know that well, the trust they put in me jeremy it's enormous and the reality is i do think boudoir you can make or break a woman's yeah. self-confidence. So I always, I do actually talk and train quite a lot in Buddha. And I'm like, if you take this on, please understand the huge responsibility you have because all women remember the terrible photos, Yeah. right? It doesn't matter if, if you see 20 good photographs of yourself, the one that stays in your head is the bad one. And you have to be deeply critical in the sense of, I know that I will not show an image if I, and it's because I've got it wrong. You know, this is the reality. There's a lot to think about. And, and I sculpt with light and I, I, of course, I pose to the nth degree. And sometimes I get it wrong. I miss something. Well, they're not going to see that picture. Yeah. It's not worth the potential damage. No. You know, I want to see all the pictures. No, no. you don't. No. <laughs> yeah. No, you want to see the very best versions of you, the ones that when you wake up in the morning and you're feeling, you know, feeling yeah. like, oh, do you know what? what a, how, how great. I know that I'm that. I'm, I am good I enough. Can be I that. can be that. Yeah, I yeah. Can, you know, that, and that, that's it. I can be that. Yeah. And a lot of people talk about some boudoir photographers really massively changing and manipulating people. And I, we, we come, you know, I have a 16 year old daughter and I see the younger generation that. Are, are constantly posting fake pictures that you know they are changing themselves so they're all getting this distorted view of no, beauty it's not just the pictures you see it in reality when you look at some of the television programs yeah. the pressure that they feel to, to yeah. get fillers and collagens yeah. and you know whatever else that's adding in there and it's a tragedy because they it were, is. and you see the difference between when before they were had all that work yeah. and what they are now you think no you should have stayed as you were and you, I actually think there's going to be a problem in the next five years when that younger generation begin to get married because they're all so controlling of an image that is not necessarily true and I'm not quite sure how wedding photography is going to work with that mentality and, and also you know I've, of all the women I photograph I have, I've had one that definitely I now realise had body dysmorphia and she you know, she just loved, she's the only person that's ever not loved all of the photographs. Wow. And I, and that kind of, that hurt me because I thought, you know, I failed. And it took me a while to realize that she's actually, she actually needs help. Right. And the, not even the photos could, you know, it's deeper than that. But for, for most people, people, it's a massively positive, you know, transformative thing. And that, and that I think, again, controlling that finished product we're going to pull it back a little bit to mm. product too, that you know that what you're giving into their hands is exactly as you want it to be, rather than letting them have a file, which if they yeah. print it themselves, it's not how you want it to be. It's not how they really looked in the photograph. It's very key. Cool. Interesting, they don't, they don't seem to want the digital files. This is this wonderful move from what's been happening in the wedding industry that is, yeah. I think, finally back on the tides turning in the right direction. But honestly, haven't found that with boudoir. They, 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 they're quite precious about about touching it, right? And and being able to keep it somewhere that they can get it out or see it. And it's a 
different mentality, which is hugely positive, but it is different to weddings. Let's have a look at a few of your pictures. I know yeah. you've got some there sitting in one of our reveal box. I'd love to see, look, pull some of them out because it, it, it's key for me to see that printed product as well yeah, and to absolutely. know what you do. And uh, um, you've got a little ribbon at the end to pull, uh, just to lift those out of there. Um, we, um, we actually did print a whole load of your photos. And they're currently sitting in Bavaria. <laughs> um, apparently heavy snow in Bavaria has stopped planes from moving. We, had, oh we were missing several boxes. Um, we've got a few products I wanted to show and a few that were sent or due to be straight to photographers. So, so my apologies. So you've kindly brought some no, photos no, it's fine. so um your style let's have a look at your style let's show it just show so i mean in terms of how do you want me to literally just show it to the camera so people can see it there <laughs> so this is what i would call a portrait um so it's not a typical portrait but the focus is on the face and this is what i always say i'm going to do lots of photographs where it's all about your body where I'm sculpting with light and then there's going to be photographs which focus on on your eyes and your face and these are the ones that people can have next to the bed. They can have them downstairs. Yes, yeah. she's got a bra on, but it's not. It, that's what it's. Unless like. you're in America. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and they're probably 20% of the shoot. I get them done first when everyone's looking great. And you know, a lot, I get asked a lot, "Do you retouch?" Yeah, I do. But in yeah. the sense of, uh, you know, sensible in a know, sensible it's, it's way. High definition. We, you know, we have to be kind, but I don't kind, change. And I'm very clear with the women right. about this. I use light. Do you have a good conversation? You get it right in the camera using yeah. light the best way and um, posing it the right way to, to use it, to get them to stand in the right place. We are, I had a little conversation earlier with one of the Zoom calls where, you know, a particular wedding ones, oh, no, I don't want any posing. Well, you know what? You, you know, you might not think you do, but actually just a little move on to one foot or, you know, turn your head this way. You know, I think that's posing, but it gets the very best version, doesn't it? I think it's the word posing that gets yeah. to people. So, so even in our wedding where we talk about directing yeah but you know just saying we're gonna and then in fact with food what people want desperately want yeah. direction i think that's one of their greatest fears and almost a barrier to booking is really yeah because you see if you've ever seen models on tv every click they're moving aren't they they're, they're doing the work for you yeah. and they're, they're paranoid they wouldn't have a clue what to do so i just said god no that's my job uh, and the other thing is that um bodies are bodies they have to go somewhere and I have to really hammer it into my clients that the only angle that counts is, is the, the lens. Yeah. So, you know, like, cause I, you have to read body language to be a boudoir photographer because you really will see them. The minute you see them being un feeling uncomfortable, glancing, you're like, OK, stop. Um, and we kind of go from there. Um, so in terms of, of the actual, let's say in terms of an album, yeah. most people will, they get from me probably too many photos. It can be around 80 and I think people are, I know are really photos, shocked I know and actually often tiny changes but to them they can't and, and really similar pictures go into the album but I think well it's fine it's, it's yeah, what they want it's, it's, more, it's their, more photos that they buy the better it's, it's isn't it absolutely so, and, it's, yeah. and it's their decision and they will just want as big a range as possible one of the secrets I would say with boudoir and I have decorated our home, you know, with a lot of care to give me range. So, so you actually shoot in your home? I do. So that's quite interesting. So you've created uh, the right kind of locations inside your home to yeah. actually shoot. So I started by doing it, going to other people's homes, you yeah. know, that classic, maybe booking a hotel room, which yeah. just always feels a bit sleazy and a bit like, you know, you're in there for two hours and the hotel, well, the hotels can be a bit like what's going on, you know, a photo shoot for two hours in a, you know, in, in long, with lingerie, they, they don't necessarily understand it. And so I, I, and I want to control, yeah. you know, the thing is I am trying to produce what I would describe as editorial style imagery that you could see in a magazine. Yeah. So everything counts, the wrong lamp, the wrong satin sheet. It, I realized really quickly that everything in that image is working towards the feeling of it and i want to attract quite high-end women yeah right that's that's my so you've identified your client base we as well to. as who who it is you're after people forget this they try and get everybody to come to them but you actually don't want everybody you want no. specific people that you know you know are going to have the right feeling for your yeah. business and you don't want a whole shoot close in you know you want some environment you want some mood yeah and so yeah we've got basically now three rooms that i can shoot in and um 
you know, the great thing is you get to put everything through the business, you know, yeah. nice new throw from the white company. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, in, it's in the pictures. And so I give people the choice. I say, do you want to come to me? I can come to you. So as I said, I went up to Edinburgh um, in September. So it was kind of between lockdowns. Is this, the, is this the picture we're going to talk yeah. about in a minute? Yeah. Cool. I, I have a, just so that everybody knows, we're going to show a picture. We're going to show a picture a little bit later on just before we finish that, uh, that Kate took not that long ago. And it, uh, it's going to get shared from my laptop um, on Zoom. So you're going to see that one in a minute. Um, but so, you, so you're shooting people's homes, but you prefer to shoot in yours? Well, I think they prefer it. Right. You know, the reality is they love the fact they come and they know they're going to get a gorgeous environment and not have to worry about what their house looks yeah. like or yeah. they haven't quite got the, the right, you know, looking home. But So now I differentiate between, and it's a result of the shoot that you're talking about, I have now differentiated between what I'd call a normal boudoir shoot yeah. and an art shoot. Right, yeah, I did notice that you've come up with this whole art category for you, yeah. and we'll, we'll touch on that towards the yeah. end. Let's have another, look, have another look at Sue, a few more pictures, and so, if you can show them to camera, well, that would be fantastic. So I they can, just think they which can, ones they I can, can see them. Make. So, I, in terms of style, I like to shoot what well, I'd say quite dark and moody. And that was my whole style, that's what I have always kind of done, and I realise I'm potentially. Um, ignoring more the more feminine pretty girls right okay so a lot of the women that come to me are quite kind of rock chicky strong independent successful women so right hand diamonds as they call them right and i realize but and it's actually because my hair and makeup artist is is quite a girly girl right. she's brilliant but she's very feminine very light and airy so then i redecorated an entire room then to give much more of this kind of look right. which is actually not my aesthetic okay and still, I would say 80% of women go for the much moodier, kind of dark, sexy look. But um, they might start in here with a white shirt or, you know, white vest. And it just gives me a bit more range and it means that, you know... More I've, to sell, too. Well, it, it, the reality is, I've learnt women will choose photographs from every, what I'd call, set. Right. And that could be lingerie set, or it could be... Wherever, portrait set, or wherever you've done and it, yeah they will they they won't want to lose photographs and so the more variety you can offer the more the more you're going to print and, and ultimately if you're selling by the print or the page or yeah. you know then that's more yeah. that's more revenue it's, yeah. a, it's an upsell that they do for you totally yeah totally and, and it literally is a case of they will not want to not have these beautiful images yeah. and so lots of women went for albums because that was probably the easiest thing to hide yeah. and get out yeah. but actually i think as people are understanding boudoir in the uk people are more are they braver yeah we've we've, we've seen um quite a few uh, the, the reveal box has been a good mm. one for us particularly when the photographer does a couple of safe shots yeah and uh, we've heard experiences where the reveal box has been in the living room with this nice portrait shot um, yeah. of the woman sitting. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, yeah. And then behind the box, behind all the others, uh, hidden yeah. away those shots that uh, they know are there, but their friends and family have no idea about. You know, and so they've got this secret little little stash that uh, that's there. And I think that's quite exciting yeah. for people too, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And and actually, women are deeply proud of the pictures. Yeah. And you can't underestimate the power of that for them and for you as a photographer and yeah. in terms of a business because it's as i said it's, there is honestly isn't selling and i and i and so but you have to do it well yeah it, it, i think what's coming across today also is so far yourself and the other speakers like this isn't about high pressure sales it's about high quality of service as as well as the image making that gets people to want to buy from you you know it's not about putting lots of bums on seats it's about choosing the right client yeah totally understanding the reasons why they want those that photographs is that, is that jeremy um, it's un not enough photographers understand what we're doing we're yeah. not giving photographs that is just the physical vehicle of what we do i know it to us we are yeah but you have to understand why they're you know humans are apathetic by nature they won't you know they, they need a really good reason to part with 
disposable income, which yeah. is what and, and this we're, is. We're a luxury. We, we are we a luxury. We are not a necessity. So, yeah. so we don't compete with other photographers. We actually compete with other luxury items, don't we? You know, yeah. If somebody's got to consider, what am I going to spend my money on? And in the past year, it's not been holidays. No, that's, that's no actually, thing. boudoir kept, has kept me going. I think really? we haven't really touched on that. I shot a lot from you know that period um, when we were the kind of autumn yeah. and i've currently got about 20 shoots on hold on on ice and um I, there's definitely there's definitely disposable income right. that's sitting in people's pockets so you you how do you market to get your clients what have you done to to create that i mean not in big detail of course because that's your own uh, your own <laughs> secret uh, secret uh, actually this is there's not really a secret it was very much a word of mouth business that right. and that was fine I, I wasn't you know I was still very focused on weddings and everything and it was kind of a secondary thing and it was actually Brent realizing that our websites were not um, work, working at all right. in terms of SEO and the reality with boudoir and all other niches like food and like animals and that kind of thing there's less competition so the reality is if you get your seo sorted you you will be able to see an impact on google and i get probably five six boudoir inquiries a week wow yeah and that's and because I wasn't getting you set that. your website up right because the google. search engine optimization is right so that an understanding what it is that people are searching for yeah. you know what you think they're searching for is probably not necessarily how they're searching and so you might you might think well if i type in kate, kate hopewell, <laughs> hopewell yeah, no, so they're, yeah they're not finding me yeah. they're, and and it, it, it is absolutely pure organic traffic in the sense they do not know I exist. Right. And he's taken me from page 15 to page one. So check and on your SEO then, make uh, sure your website structure and everything. It took, a lot, structure structure it took a lot of work and it was deeply boring. I mean, you know, I'm the first to say, I was a bit sniffy about SEO. I kind of thought you were either word of mouth or SEO. Yeah. And, and just, I can't say it enough that Brent with his technical background, kind of, he, he became, And you do, and actually you do, Brent does offer a service yeah. as well to actually do well, that. From what he's learned, yeah. he became SEO certified. And then, yeah. you know, we've got a, a really good community of photographers because of the training that we do. And, and they started coming to us. I mean, they noticed that I was kind of banged onto page one. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Without paying a penny. Without paying a penny. Now, that's interesting, isn't yeah. it? You know, that's, that's a key thing. Google must hate you um, well, because they, you've, you've, you've managed their system. But the irony system, is they you? start giving you keywords. Yeah. Google has given me about 50 keywords that wow. I have never tried to particularly be found on and, and it's led to commercial work. So, you know, it's a, I did an interesting shoot last year, which was for killing kittens, which I mean, some people will know what that is and some people won't, but it was, and they were looking for a boudoir photographer right. and it was a completely um, above the board, lovely boudoir shoot just with masks and everything. And they found me on Google. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, we uh, we often forget about all the different parts of what we what our business is. You know, we see so many people going, well, I'm going on this training course and that training course is how to take a better photograph, and they don't understand why they're not making loads of money. Yes, they're taking the best photograph, but actually, this is a business. You know, we want to pay our mortgages, yeah. we want to have everything else, all, all the nice life. life. It's, it's about, about actually making sales. So, um, I'm, I'm going to need my laptop, laptop if somebody can bring that over, because I want to share something now, uh, just in case it's just in case it's died. You mentioned you, you went up to Edinburgh to do a shoot, and um, you mentioned you went up to Edinburgh to do a shoot. And uh, I know it was a really good experience for you. How did that client come to you? How did so you Google. Come? So no, I got, Google. I got an email um, just saying that, and in fact, Thank it was you, a food wash shoot and a family shoot in one because he said, look, they, you know, they had a, an 18 month old, two year old. But it was, you know, and the, the, the shoot really went from full on beautiful boudoir. Right to just some gorgeous um, portrait shots. And she showed me an image she liked, and actually from the start, Martin, who had booked the shoot for his yeah. wife, said, Kate, I want a big piece of art on the wall. And so I said, well, how I'm big? I'm gonna ask you to leave <laughs> to share this, because this is kind of, this is again, the, the mm. fun of this technology. Um, and have we asked Italy to share this picture? Yeah. 
So um, we're going to ask in Italy to share this. Hopefully you guys can see this any second now. This is the biggest piece of, of uh, it's a Chromalux panel. Um, it's the biggest piece that we've ever made and it's the first time we'd ever done it. Um, huge piece. So everybody's huge. looking now at the size of this piece that you've done uh, for this client on their wall. I know how big it was because we uh, we had uh, we had winter Christmas deliveries and all kinds of scary stuff going on to get it to them and you know I was always going to drive it to Scotland but couldn't wow. get it in my car and we weren't allowed to drive to Scotland and also but what a stunning picture yeah. and how amazing is yeah. that? Yeah, but he started from the position of Kate. You know, a lot of these pictures are, will remain private. Yeah. But I want a, just some gorgeous shots of her that we can put up. And there's that massive one. Yeah. But they've also got a, a series yeah, of another four. Yeah, they had multiple others, didn't they? Yeah. So, you know, wall art, amazing to have on the yeah. walls. Um, I mean, that's a black and white on a chrome lux panel. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, you, I, I got that through this morning. Um, so... Uh, We're done. <laughs> oh, we finished. Oh, OK. So um, slightly mixed messages here from my team saying that we've actually closed, but uh, now, now it's roll up time. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, it's been an amazing insight, really, into your world. Uh, we always have a good chat, but sharing all of that information, I think, hopefully, is going to help so many of the photographers we're with. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, everybody. We'll be off. We've got more to come this afternoon. Loads of different things to talk about. Kate, as always, was amazing. And uh, looking forward to sharing the rest of things with you today. Thanks, everyone.